Greetings world. We are anonymous. A state of war now exists between the Russian Federation and the United States, with all members, including President Putin, authorizing a master chain counterattack against the Americans that, if fully successful, could see that nation's entire economy destroyed by the end of October. As we warned in our video Deep State preparing to remove Trump, President Donald Trump, yesterday, was unable to withstand the Deep State forces arrayed against him, thus causing him to sign a new sanctions regime against Russia that specifically targets all of Russia's major industries for destruction. And that Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev quickly responded to by grimly stating, the signing of new sanctions against Russia into law by the U.S. President leads to several consequences. First, any hope of improving our relations with the new U.S. administration is over. Second, the U.S. just declared a full-scale trade war on Russia. Third, the Trump administration demonstrated it is utterly powerless, and in the most humiliating manner transferred executive powers to Congress. This shifts the alignment of forces in U.S. political circles. What does this mean for the U.S.? The American establishment completely outplayed Trump. The president is not happy with the new sanctions, but he could not avoid signing the new law. The purpose of the new sanctions was to put Trump in his place. Their ultimate goal is to remove Trump from power. An incompetent player must be eliminated. At the same time, the interests of American businesses were almost ignored. Politics rose above the pragmatic approach. And a Russian hysteria has turned into a key part of not only foreign, as has been the case many times, but also domestic U.S. policy. This is recent. The sanctions codified into law will now last for decades, unless some miracle occurs, with the American deep state, now firmly in control of the United States. President Putin's orders, issued in late 2016, to prepare for war, against the United States have now been accelerated, and none more fearful than Operation Master Chain. Though the propaganda Western media focused exclusively on President Putin's bomb shelter preparations, they failed to inform their peoples that Russia has the most extensive network of bomb shelters to protect against nuclear war the world has ever known. While the United States has no protection for its citizens as it doesn't even spend any money on them. In October 2016 when President Putin ordered these preparations for war, the Western propaganda media, also, failed to report to their peoples that the Central Bank of the Russian Federation had developed a master chain, prototype and successfully made its first test transactions and that is one of the most fearsome weapons of global economic warfare ever invented. Managed by FinTech under the governance of the Central Bank of Russia, the Federation has become the first nation in the world to digitalize its entire domestic and international economy under the blockchain, distributed database system, the most important invention since the Internet itself, and that Tunisia became, in January 2016, the first nation in the world to convert its currency into. Though many in the world know about cryptocurrencies, such as Bitcoin and Tunisia's Ebonar, very few understand the staggering implications of its underlying blockchain infrastructure. That is the most secure method of transferring wealth, of all kinds, ever invented, is impervious to hacking and door spying, and by the day is revolutionizing our entire planet. With the United States placing its entire economic future under the full control of a vast global military structure, that requires continual conquest of other nations, and has wasted trillions of dollars of that nation's wealth, Russia, instead, invested its economic future in the blockchain revolution, that is called master chain, and whose cryptocurrency has been named gas. Once fully operational, master chain, and gas will provide to the world the most secure and secret method of transferring wealth history has ever known, and will be impervious to sanctions, spying and all Western interference, as nearly all Western economists are warning that the American stock markets are heading for an October 2017 crash of epic proportions. President Putin has today ordered both master chain, and gas, to immediately prepare for this global economic crisis offering safety and security, 
to everyone seeking to protect their wealth and investments. And with trillions of dollars flowing into master chain and gas, the United States will be unable to find any global liquidity to sustain itself as it is already being crushed by its massive $19.9 .9 trillion debt that when distributed among its 326.7 million citizens sees each of them owing their government to staggering $60,192 for each and every one of them. Russia, however, has never matched the warmongers in America and has kept defense spending at a fraction of what the U.S. spends thus allowing the Federation to have a minuscule national debt of only $157.9 billion that can be paid off instantly from Russia's $412 billion of savings, and whose 143 million citizens owe nothing, and all of whom live in a nation twice the size of the United States having a total national wealth of $75 trillion. With the deep state, now firmly in control of the U.S. Congress, their bloodlust shows no signs of abating either as they are now, also, preparing several defense bills that would require their Department of Defense to violate the 1987 Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty with Russia through the development of medium-range missiles banned under the Accord, with one of their top Democratic Party lawmakers, U.S. Senator Ben Cardin, triumphantly declaring we make the laws, not the President of the United States. And as President Trump just hours ago warned that relations between the U.S. and Russia are at an all-time and very dangerous low, and his adding that the American people should blame the U.S. Congress for this turn of events, his sudden announcement that he is going into seclusion for 17 days, beginning Friday, has raised further alarms among Security Council members wondering who exactly is now in control of the United States.